Yo, what's up guys? This is your boy Juju Blaze and the season of the Splicer has finally been announced. I hope y'all are as hyped as I am to get into this new content as it goes live next week. There are several things I want to go over in this breakdown of the trailer, so stick around till the end. Alright, so the topic of discussions will be around the new six-man activity, armor synthesis, the new warlock aspect, the base of operations for Mithrax in the helm, Vog, the new seasonal weapon, and the new exotic armor pieces. I've incorporated the trailer into my video, so if you haven't seen it already, you can watch it now. Or if you have already seen it, you could skip forward and then just go straight into the discussion. Alright, let's roll the trailer. This morning, for the first time in humanity's long and storied history, the sun did not rise. It's a Vex simulation that has plunged the city into an endless night. Osiris and I could only think of one we might turn to. Mithrax. He claims to be among the last sacred splicers. Those with the power to commune with machines. Find him, Guardian. Before the Vex do. Splice an entrance to the Vex network. I can guide you, but I cannot follow. Once inside, you must find your own way. Alright, now that you're caught up to speed or at terminal velocity, let's start off with the new six-man activity called Override. Now, on an initial reaction to this seasonal activity, I thought of a modified Menagerie or Vex Offensive. Now, for those who might not have been around through the lifespan of Destiny 2 so far, there was an event called the Menagerie that was Destiny 2's first six-man activity outside of the raid that allowed players to farm specific weapons and armors with a desired masterwork for each piece. I'm not saying that this will be exactly the same in terms of loot, but the hope is that Bungie will improve on this concept going forward, and hopefully we can get some decent farming methods. Now, the game mode is available to free-to-play players for a limited time of one week based on your initial login to the season. Next up is Armor Synthesis. In a recent TWAB, Bungie broke down what to expect from the Transbox system, but I will try to compress it out here. At the beginning of the season of the Splicer, most likely you'll need to talk to Ada One in the tower to kickstart your ability to collect synth strands in game. Synth strands will drop from defeated enemies in game. Knowing Bungie, this material won't drop from every kill you get, but maybe random drops. Next, once you collected 150 synth strands, you'll need to return to Ada One to purchase and complete a class-specific bounty to earn synth cords. The key word here is class specific. Once you have completed the bounty, return to the loom where 801 is stationed in order to convert the synth cord into synth weave. 
Note that you'll only be able to earn 10 synth weave per class in a season, which equates to two full gear sets outside of buying it from Eververse. This season, you'll be able to use up to 20 synth weaves per class, so choose wisely. Next is the new Warlock aspect. All right, Warlocks, Bungie has blessed us with a clip that allowed us to see the potentially new aspect, a Stasis Javelin. If you guys ever played the Warmind DLC a while back, you'll know what I'm talking about. Essentially, the Valkyrie Javelin from Rasputin has been converted into a Stasis Javelin that you can pick up from Shattered Targets. How busted this will be in PvE will depend solely on your aspect fragment combination, so get ready to toss them spears. The base of operations with Mithrax in the helm. On Budgie's website, they're showing a few extra images of some additional changes to the helm. This season, we shall be operating out of the helm again, but it looks like we won't be using a war table this time. Mythrex has given us splicer technology to upgrade, which may come in the form of nodes that we will upgrade on a weekly basis. Volta Glass Volta Glass is back, and though Bungie said there won't be any huge overhauls to the raid, do expect subtle changes here and there. Expect an updated guide of the raid from me, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. The new seasonal exotic weapon. The second stasis exotic is among us y'all, and it is definitely an interesting one. The cryosthesia, the cryoth, the cryosthesia, <laughs> however you want to pronounce it, the cryosthesia 77k is a kinetic sidearm with the 300 rounds per minute. The exotic perk on this gun allows you to generate stasis rounds after getting a kill. I doubt it will be broken in PvP, so I would consider it to be more useful in PvE, especially if it synergizes with the Ice Flare Bolt aspects on the Warlocks. And lastly, to wrap it up, let's take a look at the new exotic leg pieces that we'll be getting in the next season. First up is the Star Eater skills. Its exotic perk allows hunters to feast on orbs of power, charging their super more quickly and makes them more potent. The amount of super energy you get back from these orbs is definitely interesting to see if it is a percentage increase in the amount of energies per orb or if it increases the recharge rate for a period of time. From a PvE perspective, I don't know which super would benefit the most from this, but once they're here, we'll unpack it. Alright boys, support bill alert. The newest Warlock exotic boots the boots of the Assembler seem to have a high potential for the Well of Radiance Warlocks. The exotic perk on these boots converts the Warlock's Rift, Healing, or Empowerment into a projectile that seeks out their allies to bless them with noble benefits. I'm just hoping Bungie allows it to stack with the Lumina's noble rounds. And lastly for the Titans, we have the Path of the Burning Steps. The exotic perk for these boots converts solely eliminations into increased weapon damage and makes them more difficult to lock down with stasis. My interpretation of this is getting solo weapon or ability kills gives you bonus weapon damage and while in this buff, you are less likely to get frozen. Leave a comment below on what you think this means by that statement. Alright guys, this wraps up the breakdown of the trailer. If you guys found this video helpful and informative, hit that like button or simply share the video with others so that they can hear what I had to say. And if you guys want to keep up with me and my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Well guys, this is Farewell and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.